Well again, it's Cliff here. So in this video, it's a bit of an epilogue into the last video series, Squareness Comparator. And I got off into the subject of cylinder squares and I made two cylinder squares and I ha had a few strange results. So if you watch that video and you're curious about that subject, this video is going to go more deeply into cylinder squares and precision. Uh, if, if you haven't seen those videos, it won't make much sense to you, but it's an epilogue to the last two videos. <laughs> Alright, thanks. Well, an epilogue on the Cylinder Square Saga, for those of you who are interested and saw my last video. Just to summarise, you remember I made this Cylinder Square, cylindrically ground it, kissed the end, and then started to set it up, and found that I was getting variable measurements, and ultimately... Uh, tracked it down to slight out of roundness and out of parallelness and concluded that it was probably due to a fault with the heat treatment or stresses in the part that were being relaxed during the grinding process or subsequently and that it would never make a decent square. So I started again and made a, a fresh cylinder square from a new piece of 1045 steel, ground it, kissed the end and it's very very accurate and I'm very pleased with it but you know I was not happy about my conclusion that this was due to uh, the stresses letting go in the steel I mean it was behaving like an alive thing and so I, you know at night time over for a couple of nights I was sort of waking up in the middle of the night thinking this, this isn't right you know I'm not a hundred percent sure that 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 my conclusion is correct so over the weekend when I had a bit more time I set this back up again between centers and I really carefully cleaned the centers out and carefully set the pressure on the tailstock and carefully cylindrically ground it parallel and uh, took it out and it seemed to be holding shape and size and I began to wonder perhaps the problem was I was rushing I had a little bit of dirt in one of the centers or the pressure wasn't quite, quite right on one of the centers and I was actually grinding it and measuring it in a bit of a hurry and only when I got it on the surface plate were the problems, the grinding problems exposed. And so I'm beginning to think now and of course I've only, I've only had this for a few hours in this state and it seems to be holding parallel, holding round that that's what the problem was. Let's have a look at how accurate it is now. Well before I show you how accurate it is now just want to show you a little lapping procedure I've been using to improve the accuracy of these cylinder squares. So I've got this ground plate and a uh, mild steel plate and I've used some lapping, diamond lapping compound 1200 grit number 15 which is quite fine. Put it on the plate with a little bit of light oil or kerosene and I won't do it now because I've just cleaned it all off but just moved it slowly around in a sort of circular fashion in the same area on the plate and then put it back and checked it and, and um, I realized that when I got a high spot or a low spot and we're only talking a couple of microns you know a tenth of a thou I could actually shift it round to a different place by putting the cylinder square back on the plate and just bearing on the side on the side that was minus bearing down on this side a little bit harder and, and circling it round on the lapping compound for maybe you know only a minute or so and then wiping it off carefully with kerosene and that actually shifted the whole cylinder square this base surface actually changed its shape enough to move the whole cylinder square over you know a micron half a tenth of a thou quite quickly I was, I was surprised these are adjustable devices so um, I, I got it from being quite close from the cylindrical grinder it was within you know about four microns um, and then I did a little bit of lapping and now I've got it within about one micron that's one thousandth of a millimeter over about six inches so that that is really interesting now I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about the process because this is just a surface ground mild steel plate and it won't be perfectly flat it'll be curved you know there might be a thou or two of curve in it it's just what happens when you surface grinding plates of that thickness 
but I didn't want to put the lapping compound on my granite surface plate and ruin a good surface plate. Um, so I thought I'd try it on here. If I did it in the same area, maybe the curve wouldn't be too much of a problem. And, um, and that seems to work, you know, just doing it in the same area and getting repeatable results, changing it, uh, lapping it for a while, measuring it, making a little mark where it needs more off, coming back, circling it in the same area, and quite quickly, you know, um, although you need the time to sort of really focus, and, and that's why I'm doing it on the weekend, but relatively quickly, I've got this cylinder square very accurate now. So I spent a little bit of time lapping the base on that mild steel ground plate. Um, and I think I've got it pretty close. I'll just i try um, videoing it just for your interest so you can see it. So it's all about absolute perfect cleanliness. If you've got a slight little bit of dust on it, you're going to get errors. But let's try here. See if I've got it clean enough. I'll just slide it across. We're just coming across, I'm off to the side of it, but we're coming across to about 10 and a, 10 and, I'll set it on 10 there. Okay, let's turn it round. If I turn it too fast, I get the dreaded squawk. Ten again. Ten again. So I can see that that is, you know, you can see a micron on a hundredth millim hundredth of a millimeter um, dial indicator. Although I'd like to have a thousandth of a millimeter dial indicator. I think they're two thousandths of a millimeter. Ten again. So now I've got it. You know, within a micron, just with a, a little bit of lapping. So I thought I'd point that out to you guys if you're interested in the process of lapping. I'm a little bit worried with it that you're getting diamond on it, and this diamond lapping this, and it's very hard diamond, and it may be embedding into the metal. And then when you put that on your surface plate, how much of it is left in there? You know, you sort of wash it off with kerosene and tissues and you, you, you don't know at a microscopic level there could still be diamond in there. And um, I notice where I've been turning this round, the surface plate goes a slightly different colour. Is that just microscopic scuffing of the surface? So that's why I've got it in the corner. I'm putting, I'm putting the cylinder squares uh, for measurement in the corner, so if I am removing any of the granite, it's not removing it from the low spots in the middle, but from the high spots on the, on the corners. Um, when I've finished this operation, I'm going to give the surface plate a really thorough clean with the Starrett cleaner. Um, but, you know, that worries me about the lapping process, that you could get some residual diamond in your measuring instruments. Um, but hopefully you can wipe enough out for it not to be a major problem. So that's got that really accurate. While I'm at it, while I'm running the video, this is the one I made uh, just quickly, and it's, I didn't, haven't done any lapping on this, it just came out right. So we're about nine, I see that, about nine, seven there. Ooh. Nine, nine there. I haven't cleaned it really carefully. There may be a bit of dust under it. Nine, eight there. Nine, eight there, yeah. There could be a bit of dust under it, but this, this is within a micron. Maybe a micron less accurate than the one I've been lapping. But realistically, I don't think I'll try and get that any more close. Because it's probably more about surface plate cleanliness and, and uh, gauge cleanliness than anything else. So, you know, a micron over six inches, a thousandth of a millimetre, is half a tenth of a thou over six inches. We're, we're talking, you know, if I breathe on it or hold it with my hands for a couple of minutes, it'll expand more than that. So I'm very pleased with that. So that's a bit of an epilogue on the uh, last video on the squareness comparator where I, I got into problems with my cylinder squares. 
Well, maybe I should make some actual measurements here. If you're watching this video, you've probably got a lot of patience and you're pedantic like me, so you don't mind um, the slow pace of it. So measuring this, um, I'm, I'm, it's pretty round, you know. A lot, you know when you're measuring with a micrometer, a lot of it is down to thimble pressure. You can use the ratchet. Um, I actually prefer not to because you're using the anvil faces and a little bit of torque on it to sort of juggle in and get it really square. And if, if it's slightly out of square, the, the ratchet won't be quite enough to let you sense that. So I'm getting around about one micron under 46 hundredths. And if I come this way, yeah, one or two microns under 46 hundredths. So I think that any variation I'm getting here uh, between out of round and out of parallel is uh, just in micrometer in, in, in uh, my, my sensitivity and the pressure that I put on there. But these sort of micrometers, it's a very light frame. It's a good quality Mitutoyo micrometer, but it's a very light flame, frame. Um, you can easily spring it. You know, you could spring it by, by a hundredth of a millimeter very easily. So you're trying to sense the torque and, and the ratchet is not particularly, it's not a particularly good way to do that. Um, you know, it, it helps, but you can sense it pretty well just, just with finger pressure. You're trying to sense the torque and juggle the micrometer faces on exactly parallel uh, and get the same amount each time. And you can really only get it to within about a thousandth of a millimeter uh, by hand with, with, your, with your hand feel with a micrometer like this. Um, but yeah, it's, I'd say it's, as far as I can measure it, it's within a thousandth of a millimeter of parallel and round. And when I check it uh, with my squareness comparator, it's within a thousandth of a millimeter of square. So that's really interesting to have the time on the weekend to take it a level higher and get closer towards precision. You know, we're now talking about a thousandth of a millimeter. I can see that if you wanted to get to a millionth of a, of a millimeter, it's a whole new world. And uh, you need a temperature controlled workshop. You would need all sorts of uh, higher end equipment um, than I have here. All right, thanks for watching this right to the end. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.